Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I want to start off first by uh, thanking um, Bob and Peggy Shoop for the wonderful letter that they sent me. I got it. Thank you. Um, I got a couple other things. So if you sent something in the mail that should have gotten there yesterday, I got it. But this was a, a letter, really nice, long, front and back, old school kind of thing. It's nice. And uh, thank you for the encouragement. Um, so yeah, yeah, thank you again for that. For today, we have a very interesting conversation to have. Um, I, I think for a long time now, there has been a conflation, um, in the uh, the church world and i want to break apart two things here the idea of salvation and the idea of relationship um and i just want you to think a little differently about this it is not something groundbreaking to at least uh, not to my knowledge um but it is something that i really hear get spoken about when uh, you sit before a preacher. So we're going to talk about whether or not salvation is a versus relationship thing or whether salvation is relationship or vice versa. Um, so let's begin. Salvation. Um, throughout the Bible, salvation has been referred to as a gift. The same almost as the Holy Spirit has been referred to before as a gift. Um, and we've talked before too about salvation being that doorway to the kingdom. You've been saved to the kingdom from sin. But it came to my attention that there are many that think that once that's done, that's it. That's that's the extent. I'm saved. I can now be who I was before, but I'm saved. And we've also spoken about the saved sinner thing. And those are that people where they say they're saved, and that's the extent of their salvation. Um, and I do believe that salvation is a instantaneous thing. This is me, again, I'm, from what I've read. Um, what I think the journey is, is the relationship. Now, I will flesh this out so it's not confusing to people, okay? I don't want nobody coming back to tell me that I said that um, once saved, always saved thing. And that there are some that believe that. Feel free to believe it. That, I mean, if you're telling me that, then okay, fine, whatever. Um, the whole idea comes down to whether or not you're really saved. But that's a topic for a different day. Today, we're going to discuss salvation relationship. Salvation came through the death of Jesus Christ. Okay. His death fulfilled a requirement of the law that we ourselves could not fulfill. In order for us to attain citizenship in the kingdom, we have to go through the birthright process of salvation. You must participate in the exact same thing that Jesus went through in terms of death to self and the life that he offered after his death. It's the only access you have to the kingdom. There's no other way in. Nothing you can do can get you in there. Okay. That is salvation. 
there is a different version, I say, of salvation that people view. And that is what they call continual, right? So you have every day you are in the journey of salvation. That I don't believe. I'll tell you why. I believe that you are saved through something not of yourself. That's the gift. The relationship is the treasure which you search for, you hunt for, you trek for, you navigate for, towards. That's the rest of your life. That is the rest of your journey. Salvation is your access point to the kingdom and your relationship is the fleshing out of finding all the wonderful mysteries of the kingdom. You can't encounter that relationship without salvation. You cannot because you cannot be in pursuit of him without being brought near. And you can't get brought near without accepting salvation. So when you see people say, well, I don't believe in the whole God thing, but I'm saved, or I have a relationship with God, they're lying. And you can tell them that they're lying, and it's completely fine to tell them that they're lying. You cannot, in any form or fashion, say you have a relationship with God without salvation through Jesus. It's not possible. It was not designed that way. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you think. I don't care who told you. It is a lie. Plain, simple, straight up, stinking, dirty, disgusting lie. You can't do it. I don't care if you feel it. You can't do it. Whoever you think you're talking to, it ain't God. It, it's not. In order to have that audience, you have to be allowed before the throne. The only way you can be allowed before the throne is through salvation. If you don't take up the method of salvation, you ain't getting before the throne to talk to God. You can't do it. It's not going to happen. However, once you have access through Jesus, the journey of the relationship begins. You can now act out the wondrous gift of salvation through relationship. You cannot have one before the other. There is no relationship before salvation, which means there can be no salvation after relationship. Because you can't be in someone's house without going through the door the proper way. Everything else, there's only one door to this house. One door. And the requirements to get into that door is very stringent. There are no back channels. There's no crack in the window. There's no back door left unlocked. There's no friend on the inside that could let you in. One access point, one access point only. If you are seeking God, you have to be saved. The only way for you to be saved is to accept the gift of salvation through Jesus. There is no other way, no other option, no other method. Once that is done, you begin to foster your relationship with God.
do not think that because you say I'm saved, that's the extent and there's nothing else left for you to do. Because if you really were accepting of the salvation that God offered, by that point, you would understand your need for the relationship. You would not be satisfied with just sitting there. You would not be content to just sit and say, I'm saved. And never speak to him. Never foster a deeper relationship. Never depend on him. You're just saved. Now, I will, I will dare you. I want to dare you to ask any random person at the body that you worship at, if you do. And ask them this, this question. Is salvation your relationship with God? Just ask them that. Ask them if salvation is their relationship with God. Okay, ask them. I guarantee they're going to say, yeah. They'll say, yeah. There is a running philosophy throughout the church today that salvation is your relationship. Now, you can, you can be honest with me and tell me whether or not you've heard that before. I've heard it myriads of times, that salvation is my relationship with God. The same way, the same people cannot tell you what Jesus preached. Because he didn't preach his death, burial, and resurrection. That's not what he preached. They, they couldn't tell you what Jesus preached. They will tell you that they think the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. That's the good news. That's what they'll tell you. No, Mimi, you actually can't. You can't. Here is why. What would you be relating to? And how can you, without the covering of the one person that allowed you before God, can you have a relationship with God? Tell me. There is no way for you to know somebody that you have never met. You, you can't have a relationship with somebody you ain't met. And the only way to meet is to be saved. So you can't have that relationship. It's not possible. Being saved is the aspect of accepting the fact that Jesus paid a debt on your behalf that you could never pay. And that he entered the grave, took the keys of death away, came up victorious, and created an avenue for you to live his life through his death. That's the accepting of that. You have to turn away from the life that you currently live to take up his life. You have to accept that reality. Accepting that is salvation. If you don't, there is no way for you to get in. 
There simply isn't. There isn't. You can't get up one day and, th and say to yourself, well, I'm done with sinning. I guess I'm saved now. Uh, no, no, you, you don't save yourself. Um, I'll tackle that on a um, separate podcast. It's not a bad topic. We'll have a discussion about that for sure. We will definitely have a topic about that. That one will take some time to flesh out. And if I just dump the answer here, it'll create more confusion than it will answers. Um, so you're, you're entering into, and that's why I equate it to a house. Okay, that's why I equate it to a house. You can get up one day and decide that you are going to build a house. And you say to yourself, this house will protect me from everything. This house will be my salvation from everything around me. Here's a problem. You don't really know what's out there. You have a, a concept of what's out there, but you haven't built your house for every possible scenario. You haven't built your house for that. I'll get to you in a minute, Karen. You haven't built your house for that. You built your house to the best of your knowledge that this is what it would require to stand up to stuff. But in your mind, you think you're saved because there's nothing that can penetrate the walls you build. Then something comes that you didn't expect. An animal the size of King Kong comes and just breaks down your house and you're left wondering but i thought i was safe in here i built this i i built it with what i knew that's the problem you build it with what you knew jesus comes along builds a house and because he knows everything every possible attack from every angle everything is covered the house is strong enough to withstand any and everything. So you come into that house. Then you are definitely saved. Nothing can touch you in that house. <clears throat> it was a house you didn't build. It was built by somebody who knows everything. which is why you can't save yourself. Once you've entered the house and he's invited you in, he's invited you into the house. You've accepted his invitation and you've entered the house. Now you can sit down and get to know the person that built your house. Now you're set. Now you can have a relationship. On the outside of the house, I cannot know him. You can't know him. The relationship isn't built like that. And the only way for you to get into the house is to be invited. An invitation is out there. You have to accept the invitation. That's your job. Accept the invitation. Now, Karen, your question. Um, I want to uh, have you understand that when Adam and Eve sinned, they entered into a space where they handed over dominion of something that they were given the rights to over to Satan. They handed it off. They were now bound by a different law. And the only way for that law to be removed from them is to have 
the punishment of that law fulfilled. The penalty that would require, that would have been required for them to be set right, Jesus paid. <clears throat> right? So he paid it. And the dominion that Satan had over mankind, those keys to our death and destruction, while they were in his hands, were plucked from his hands because the sacrifice that Jesus offered was the fulfillment of the punishment that Adam and Eve invoked on mankind. He, through his death, removed all of the penalties that we incurred, all the strongholds, all of the dominion, all of it, any key to our soul that Satan possessed because of the fall, Jesus took. No longer did he have power over us, which is why he can tell you, you no longer have to fulfill the needs of the flesh. You don't have to. There's no more stronghold on you. I have released you from that dominion. And you can have true freedom where I will place you. Because now I can put you back there. I fulfill the requirement. You no longer have to deal with that. We, when we fell through Adam and Eve, we handed our souls off. We were bound because the covenant that we broke, our punishment was death. The only person that holds those keys at that time was the evil one. In order for us to be freed, someone had to fulfill the requirement that we incurred. Someone had to die. But in order to make it a permanent, as opposed to the sacrifices of old, there was one very important caveat to it. The sacrifice of the person that had to give themselves up had to be willing and perfect. Willing and perfect. Sacrifice. Not only was he willing and perfect, but he also came with authority to retrieve the said power that we handed off. Now he has control of it again. And what he's calling you into, what he's calling you into, is a relationship that you should have had before the fall. Consider it the garden. We'll make an analogy of the garden. He has now created a pathway back to the garden. And I'm talking about in a relational aspect. No longer are you blocked. You have access. But through only one avenue. Jesus paid the debt, erased the punishment, but only, only if you accept it. It is not a for everyone thing because not everyone will accept it. There are many who will hear and refuse. And that's their choice. Ignorant as it might be, that's their choice. But the thing about God is that he's not going to change his process simply because people don't like it. He understood that you can't please everybody, which is why he said, when you get to a place, guys, if they don't take you, dust your feet off and move on. Now they're without excuse. They can't say they didn't know. They can only say they chose. 
Jesus saved you. Kingdom life can begin. You endure the relationship and foster the relationship and build the relationship on your journey here on earth. You become more and more in tuned with him every day. Dependency becomes your way of life. Conversation becomes your way of life. The things of this world doesn't appeal to you anymore because you're not focused on that. You're focused on the relationship. That's the job. And the reason why the relationship never gets stale is because you are always mindful of the sacrifice. That sacrifice never wanes old because it was always true. I don't have to remind myself of the way he sacrificed himself. But I do know what my end was and what it is now. I know what I was and I know what I am. That knowledge that he saved me from what I was is what drives me forward into knowing more about him. I should not be content to just say, I'm saved. And I know nothing more about him. Or I just learn what people tell me. That's not a relationship. If you took a marriage and you just depended on all of your spouse's exes to tell you about your husband or your wife, do you, do you really think you'd get to know that person? That that's how you want to get to know God? Vicariously? <laughs> I wouldn't want to know God vicariously. Some guy is talking about God and he was hurt by somebody and he taints his view about God because of that relationship. And that's what you get. And all of a sudden, that's your view of God now. That's what you want? Some hurt ex telling you about your current wife and husband? Or some person obsessed and not really looking for the truth? That, that's what you want? No. I would prefer to know my spouse myself. Talk to them every day. Get to know who they are. Build my world around them. Walk together with them. Why, why would you do anything like that? Like anything, any chore in life, you don't normally want to do it like that. You don't go and buy something. I mean, some people do. Some people base their buying on reviews. Either I'm going to like it or I'm not going to like it. I'm not caring whether you like it or not. That has zero to do with me. Just because you like something. I've watched tons of movies back in the day that I liked that nobody else liked. If I were to base it on popularity, I wouldn't watch that movie. I don't want to base it on somebody else. I have to base it on what I like. I have to get to know it. I have to be convinced. I cannot base my convincing on somebody else's argument. That just means I can regurgitate. I can't walk it out. Someone tells you this about God. God will accept you as you are and there's no need for you to change. That's what they'll tell you about God. And you just take it. That's true. Meanwhile, that's nothing at all to do with God. So are you in a relationship? 
it's like that ignorant spouse who doesn't even have a clue of what makes you tick. They're of the opinion that just because they're there, that's a relationship. No, I love you. No hugs, no kisses, nothing. You're just married. Well, I married you, didn't I? That should be enough for you. Is that how we treat normal marriages? I expect it to work? Well, I told you yes, didn't I? I told you yes, so there you go. I don't need to do nothing else. We don't want to treat marriage like that, but we somehow feel like we need to treat God like that. Somehow, we look at God like it's a loveless marriage. Well, I got the ring. That's all that matters. I got the ring. I don't need to do nothing else. It's not going to function. And before too long, it's done. It fizzles out. You grow cold, you get angry, and then you start blaming God for stuff that you invoked on yourself. You never embarked on the journey. You never fostered a relationship. Not once. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift is access. The treasure is the relationship. Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of yourselves, it is a gift of God. A gift. You see, We also equate things like knowledge as a relationship. The more I know. I know my wife likes blue. I know my wife likes rings. I know my wife likes perfume. I know my wife's favorite color is purple. Yeah, but do you know your wife? I know my, fav my husband likes um, fishing. I know my husband likes sports. I know my husband likes guns. I know my husband likes bowling. But do you know your husband? I know God abhors sin. I know God doesn't live where sin is. I know God saved me. But do you know God? You know aspects. You know traits. But do you know him? That is relationship, is knowing the person. You can recognize your wife by the way she walks amongst other people. You could recognize your hubby in a crowd just by one little nuance. Somebody could tell you something about your husband or your wife, and you will know straight off the top they're lying. That's true knowledge of your spouse. First Timothy 2, 3, and 4. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And he is truth. 
if you looked at the patriarchs, Abraham continually was before God to know God. To the point where Abraham and God could have conversations. Not God commanding Abraham. They were conversing. Relationship. Moses. Relationship. David. Relationship. Job. Relationship. Elisha. Relationship. Elijah. Relationship. They all pursued a relationship with God. Not just took commands, not just say they knew him, they knew him intimately. He is calling you for one very important thing, and that's to be saved. And then he's calling you further into a relationship. So that nothing of this world, nothing of this world, will matter more than the relationship. There'll be no bridge will cross that will take you away from the relationship. There is no other door you're going to try and go through because you're in a relationship. All of it leads back to that connection. So if I leave you with nothing else about this topic, it's this. Your salvation is your first step into the kingdom. The rest of it, you walk out in a relationship with God. Through faith in Jesus and by the direction of the Holy Spirit. It is not complicated. You enter into the kingdom through the blood of Christ. You walk out that relationship through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. When you get to the place where you understand that salvation does not end with access into the kingdom, but it's the doorway to the beginning of your relationship. you will have way more, way more enjoyment in your walk. Way more. Way more. You will not have more peace. You will not have more calm than when you're doing that. Like dead serious, you wouldn't. It's like the we it's like a weekend all the time. <laughs> it's like you know when you have worked all week and you're just tired. And then that weekend comes that you have nothing planned. There is nothing to do. There is no housework. Everything was done in the week and the weekend is here and it's a Saturday. And you can sleep in and then you can get up have your cup of tea or coffee and you can sit on your porch and it's about 65 degrees out light wind just enough sun birds no cars no extra noises just peace If I could describe the relationship with God, that would be it. That, that would be it. And you don't want to leave that. You will fight tooth and nail to stay there. But you can't get there without accepting salvation. You can't.
in any case, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Tomorrow, we're going to be discussing the message of Mary. Um, and when I say Mary, I'm not talking about his Jesus's mom. Okay, I'm not. So this is not about a Catholicism thing. So don't don't think that. Okay. We're talking about the lady that sat at his feet. Okay. <clears throat> Do not get it twisted. We ain't Catholics around here. Excuse me. Um, we will be having the Savage Patriots today. So please join us for that. And then for the next couple of weeks on the Savage Patriots, we will be... Um, covering um, every president that took America into a war. That's the next topic, so look out for that. So every war that America has been in, we'll be seeing it from the administrative side of it, and why they brought that in there and all that stuff. So it'll be an educational process. It'll be good. Scrolling about the bottom there, is the options. Um, if you uh, have that inclination from the Lord, please use the discernment. And then if you have need to send anything via the mail, this is the P.O. box. I will, Dolores. And if you uh, can't write it down here, it is on my YouTube page in the About section. You can find the P.O. box there. So please do that. Um, and I will mean anything. You have a letter you want to send. You have a, a comment you want to make. A uh, An issue you have with something I say that you can't or don't want to send via email and want to write it out, feel free to do that too. No problem. Um, I check, like I said, every three days. I checked yesterday, so I won't be checking again until Friday. So I hope you guys have a grand rest of the day. Um, we'll see you tonight. Or rather, yeah, 6.30 p.m. Eastern tonight. 8, 30, 8 o'clock Eastern tonight and 9.30 Eastern tonight. Love you guys. Mean it. Have a grand rest of your day. We'll see you on the other programs if you feel like tuning in. Wisdom calls to you from the streets. So please, please, find wisdom. Peace.